Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a couple of things. You know, America remains the world's richest, most dynamic, and productive economy. Uh, it's the largest economy. It's 25% of the world's economy. It's a $24.5 trillion economy. America was 40% of the world's seven largest economies in 1998. Today, it's 58% or an 18% increase. Uh, America is home to 11 of the top 15 universities in the world. Tech investment raised $150 billion, or 49% of the global total, and more than double that of China. Uh, in the United States today, as the ranking member has said, that the U.S. recovered from the coronavirus pandemic faster than any major economy in the world. Unemployment is at a stunning low, 3.4%. Biden's economy grew three times the average pace of the previous economy. Real incomes are rising. Manufacturing is booming with 800,000 new jobs. <clears throat> Employment <clears throat> has grown under the, this administration by 14 million jobs. <clears throat> Even inflation, which this month was at 4.1%, is lower than the global average of 5.2% and two percentage points lower and the average inflation in Europe. Uh, even the budget deficit, 15.6% of the economy at the end of the Trump administration has dropped to 5.5% at the end of last year. Now, I was just looking at the last uh, 34 years. You've had three Republican administrations <coughs> and you've had four Democratic administrations. We've had four recessions and four recoveries. Under George H.W. Bush, Bush won, the deficit grew by $300 billion and drove the economy into recession. Under the Clinton administration, he fixed the broken Bush economy and grew the economy by 4% each year, sustained over an eight-year period, paid $400 billion in debt reduction and left Bush to George W. Bush with a $260 billion surplus. Bush II took the Clinton surplus and turned it into a $1.2 trillion deficit and drove the economy into its worst recession since the Great Depression in 2008. Bush cut. <laughs> The or Obama came in, cut the Bush deficit by $600 billion. Uh, Trump increased the deficit by nearly $2 trillion, lost 3 million jobs, including 200,000 manufacturing jobs, and accumulated $8 trillion in debt, which necessitated the raising of the debt ceiling three times. Uh, Biden created 14 million jobs. I mean, this is, there's a trend here, and each of these administrations that failed economically adopted a supply-side economic policy that disproportionately gave tax cuts to the very wealthy. And each time, those economies have failed miserably and then were saved by the Democratic administrations that came in and invested in the growth of the American economy. And that's what the economy did under those administrations. Mr. Mazur, uh, what, what, am I, what am I missing here, sir? At, that we, we all tend to do is overstate the role of the tax system in what's going on in the U.S. economy. It's a contributor, but it's not the driving force. Um, the U.S. is a very strong economy. As you point out, 4% of the population, 25% of the world's economic output. Um, that means we're in a position where we have lots of strengths. Well, uh, good labor force, good capital markets, good rule of law, uh, support of federal government, support of rules, and so on. So we, the tax system is just part of the, the process. I guess I, I, I might quibble a little bit with assigning blame to each of these administrations or, or credit. Um, it is true that the, the economic policies of the Democratic administrations tended to raise taxes and put you in a better fiscal position. That part is true. Um, but whether- Does infrastructure investment grow the economy? Yeah, I think that one of the major benefits of the infrastructure bill that was passed is it allows there to be high rates of return investment in every state of the country. Because that is an investment in the growth and the productivity of the American economy. 
um, tax cuts that end up as stock buybacks uh, do not contribute to the growth of the economy. And what I'm simply pointing out here is that there is a trend that is historical and factual. Sir. Gentlemen's time.